We've talked about how the side porch is one of the signature elements in the architecture here, so we'd like to keep you posted on how it's coming along. The last thing we talked about was installing the retractable screen hardware, and that was a fun thing to see because the guys were able to give us a preview of how the screens are going to be working. And we needed the hardware in place so that we could finish all the trim and ceiling work in here, but we've since put the screens in storage until final installation. One thing we need to do is finish the ceiling, and to do that, we're using 1x6 tongue and groove cedar. We've gone ahead and painted it beforehand, since it's a lot easier to do that now instead of after it's installed. We're just nailing it right to the framing, and it's the same style and color as what is in the soffits and underneath the front porch, so there's some nice continuity there. So what we're doing there is working from the top down with full pieces up against the flat ceiling and then make sure that every course is level to each other from side to side before moving down to the next course. And that's what Bucky and Dan have been working on. Okay, this one's ready, Dan. And we do have a couple of challenges when you're talking about working with tongue and groove on a structure like this. And one is to make sure that each course is level with the other on all four walls. That's a challenge when you're talking about the angles that we have here. And if that's not right, you definitely can see it from below. Typically what you want to do on, on tongue and groove like this is you want to nail through the tongue. Because then the next piece will slide over that, the groove, and you'll hide those fasteners, call it like blind nailing. And to do that, we're just using finish guns, you know, a brad nailer and a finish nailer. And if Dan does his work right, we won't see any of the fasteners. But some of the ends, you know, you have to face nail. But we'll put a coat of paint on there, you'll never see them. And I have two saws set up out here in my cut station. One is to cut my miters, a compound miter. The other one is just to cut square cuts. The cuts that we came up with took a little bit of head scratching, but this cut right here, the miter, is a 35 degree. And then for the compound cut, we put a 45 degree on there because the roof is a 12-12, which represents a 45 degree angle. So once we got everything dialed in, which we figured out now, it's smooth sailing. So Dan, give us an idea of how you're making sure everything lines up. Well, for us, the easiest way, ma'am, is to have a reference line. We measured up from the beam, went a line all the way around the whole perimeter here, and then I'm constantly measuring down on that line to keep all these points even. When we hit the bottom, our reveal's gotta be the same. Exactly. And you have a little bit of a challenge with the slope ceiling and then these <laughs> vertical walls here next to the dormers, so what's your plan there? You're asking me, how come we're not mitering these corners? Right. Well, we got one running flat, one running horizontal, so there's no way we can make this work without ripping this piece down, in which we're not gonna do. So. We're, we're going to butt it, we're going to put a small piece of trim in it, hide it on the end, so it'll basically, hopefully, disappear. Well, it looks good so far. Yeah, piece by piece, huh? Little by little. So yeah, if we keep yeah. measuring <laughs> every two courses and we go down parallel, we shouldn't have a problem. That's where Dan's up there. I'm just the cut guy. <laughs>